Hi everyone, it's Marie Barclay here from I Am Still Standing and I am so happy to introduce to you our special influential guest all the way from New York City. His name is Arthur J. Rutledge and although he lives in New York, he was actually born in Detroit. But he is a wonderful soul. Uh, he has a great mind, you know, and that's evident in what he does today as an established John C. Maxwell team member and is also a certified coach, speaker and trainer. I know that you will love the information that he has to share. He does wonderful things even in Clubhouse in his room or one of his rooms, Agape, and also with the international talk segments that he does in his inter-united live Instagrams, and uh, I know that you will find him extremely inspiring. So enjoy this. It's wonderful and so wonderful that it's been cut into two parts. So you get double of Arthur, not just one of him. Lots of love and enjoy. Hello. Hi. So it's, it's so great to have you on the Why I'm So Standing podcast. Yeah, it's an absolute Hi. pleasure. And you're dialing in from New York City, just I at the very top now. there of Central Park. And you're born and raised Detroit, somewhere? Michigan. But you've spent quite a lot of your time up that way. And you've got a background in modeling and I was speaking with our friend Tom McComa earlier and he asked me to ask you about how your dancing is going. <laughs> we love that. <laughs> me and Tom have so much in common because we have a lot of jobs that we've had over our life. We, so we had a lot of life lived experiences yeah. uh, and he's in music and um, just so many things, you know, it cracks people up because I've done so much in uh, my life so far. But yeah, he's a great leader and um, yeah. just a privilege to be on talks with him as well. Yeah. He thinks very highly of you too. So, <laughs> And you, you're you actually mentioned in his podcast. So it was only fair that you okay. are. Vice that person, you, right? Also, yeah. <laughs> they reciprocate in the right way. Exactly. Uh, you should have got him to at least sing a song with his guitar, not just with his glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what I, I did actually have in my notes to maybe have a bit of an encore with him doing guitar but I didn't we didn't quite get there the time just got away from us but perhaps the next one yes yeah, so what has brought you to why I'm so standing and why is it so important for you to voice what we're going to be talking about today which is the core principles of harmony and connectivity well it's because that's what we're all about, or that's what I'm about. And I understand that in you, I understand that when I talk into rooms, whether it's IG lives or uh, used to be in platforms a little bit more now, or clubhouse, it's what I know the result is going to be. Someone's going to listen to this. They're going to take it upon themselves to really be the best they can possibly be for themselves mm -hmm. and do it in a conscious way mm -hmm. where they are growing at the same time. And mm -hmm. they're also giving uh, what they're learning at the same time, that evaluated learning, that evaluated experience that I've come back into myself. I know that others will be able to have in their lives. Mm, definitely. And after all, and gratitude is the biggest. So I'm in gratitude every step of the way. And it, it leaves all types of creative juices flowing for us. To yeah, start. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to go back and have a listen to the live that I just did on Instagram because that's all to do with uh, gratitude and, you know, all of those fuzzy things. And um, But, I mean, the, the pictures that you've sent me, they're obviously model pictures. Uh, uh, newer, older, you know, uh, there's me shade. So people, uh, they don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's like During if I didn't 2020, know. 2020, I let it grow all out. Whatever recognized you yeah yeah I, I grew i uh i had uh some of my old lives that i was doing um uh, in 2020 i had these beard you know i was really? I looked, you know, really? like the uh the bounty man on uh, <laughs> uh <laughs> well, father <laughs> christmas right yeah. yes <laughs> yes uh, santa and so and the grace started to really come out more because i was i used to always just shave my head i told people i didn't understand that i could still grow my hair the way i used to 
and I found out is a welcome experience to know that I can still grow it. Yeah, well, at least you have hair, right? Yeah. So because some people don't. <laughs> well, I was taking it, I was taking it for granted. I, I kept I was just shaving yeah. over and over. And it's a good yeah. look. I, I might go back to that. Uh it it's hands off. You know, I can wake up and just and yeah, go and do a bit of a it. flick <laughs> and it's <laughs> And voila, it's and like voila. You just stepped out of a salon. <laughs> this is yeah. This takes a little bit longer to play with and get going and coaxing, and it's a good yeah. thing. And, oh, it, and yeah. also, again, in gratitude, I'm able to have it. So yeah, no, you can be grateful for so many things. We have so much to be grateful for. So um, I'm grateful that you've come on, uh, you know, and that you've shown up even after a, a couple of failed attempts of on from both our sides. <laughs> Um, but you know it's it's all about showing up and uh you know being true to who you are and, and going from there so yeah looking forward to this conversation Arthur so just breathe and take it all in <laughs> we'll do one of our in with three breaths and out with three breaths that's right but remember um the last time we spoke you said that you weren't quite sure of the answer or the response to what your definition of love is so I thought let's let's start with that and then we can move forward from that so the communication is the communion the realization of oneness which is love Eckhart Tolle gave Mm -hmm. And I would say that love starts with us being our authentic self and recognizing that in everyone else. Mm, nice. Yeah. I've actually learned a lot about a person by asking that question, Arthur, you know, what is your definition of love? And it is quite powerful because that word and that feeling is actually used in a lot of what I do. So it's it's awesome to hear what other people think it is to them because it is all vast, right? It's it's yeah. uh, because it's not just a a thing or one thing. But so that's a nice world. description, Arthur. Yeah. So I would say that that would encompass. Let's put it like this: agape. I used and I had that's the name of my club on Clubhouse, and I put yeah. it that for a reason. And agape in the Greek definition is God's ultimate love. Mm, mm. And so that, you know, in Greek, you know, you have a few different type of love. You have filio, you have agape, you know, mm-hmm. brotherly love, all these type of things that break down. But really, the respect of myself echoes out to those that are around me. And by the example of that, we create a bond. We create symbiosis. Mm. Because we're showing that we're willing to do that by way of putting ourselves in front of her, being the person who's vulnerable, mm. being the person who, through that vulnerability, wants to build trust. So that's my emotional currency. And so love is all what that is when you're able to embrace who you are, which we are love, and the oneness of what that looks like. It's a word called Ubuntu. I don't know if you yeah, I love it. it. Yeah, I love Ubuntu. I actually did I am, a, as you are. a video of it a couple of years ago about an archaeologist who studied in South Africa for some time, and he gave this group of children, he put some lollies in it at a tree, and he said to this group of children, Whoever runs to the tree and gets there the first will get this bag of lollies or this um, basket of lollies. And he was so amazed because the children didn't just all run off. They held hands and they all ran together and they all got to the basket together. And he asked one of them a bit later, why did you do that? You know, why didn't you just all race and grab it all for yourself? And the child said to him, why would you, you know, why would I let other people be sad when we can all be happy? Something along those lines. And and I love it. Yeah. What's your interpretation of Ubuntu? As I am, you are. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the the briefer version of it. And and together, it's the embodiment of togetherness us right yeah interdependence Uh, yeah yeah it's like the the weaving together of the tapestry in the bible Mm -hmm. right the joining together of nations and different nationalities and different species 
Yeah, it's a great word. <laughs> I love it. But yeah. I don't hear many people talk about it, Arthur. So it's in a state of being that's a lot of times outside of people's awareness, because a lot of selfish uh, intent has been put in our hearts. Children are not greatly selfish, uh, not from a very young age. A lot of these things are taught to them. Mm, yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, and because that's because beliefs that are carried on for many, many years. Yeah. Also, because parents are in lack of attention too. So when we come back, many when we think back many years ago, our parents put these things in our psyche as well. They did their best they they could. Yeah, with what they what had they, at the time, right? They did all that they could for what they had. And so. When, when we get to a place of forgiveness, when we get a pl- to a place of detachment, a place of release without resistance, we're able to really understand that, does this feel all right in my body? Mm. And because I understand, yes, this does, or no, this doesn't, then I've had a lot more time to really assess what that is for me. Mm. Mm. And when I look, think of, what that is from a parent's perspective is I've given you everything I had. And there, and a lot of times when you hear parents say that, they really have. Mm-hmm. They only can, you, like any other learning, you can only learn from where you're at. Mm-hmm. And so it takes the intentionalness of being your authentic self, your true being. And mm-hmm. it's a practice and it's a spirituality. Yeah. It's a, it's, you know, and so the word Ubuntu really is a selfless, to be selfless, you have to be forgiving. You have to be, you know, willing to walk the fire as well, not just to dish it out. Or just to be point. it. Yeah. 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 Or, or talk about it. I mean, sorry. not Yeah. yeah to talk, to yeah. talk about, to, to, to talk about it is to being it as well, to write it, whatever yeah. that is. You have to embody it. You yeah. have to embody mm-hmm. who you authentically are yeah. uh, a lot of times yeah. people say well i'm not that authentic person yeah well, that's be- we a lot of times we haven't tapped into that we haven't yeah. known and also we have to start all over it's a lot of work in that right yeah. and it's a lot of unlearning as well isn't yeah. it arthur because you've been taught all this stuff right all this garbage has been placed into you you know whether it's been through school or whether it's been through work or parents or sisters siblings a lot of that unlearn. is done from scratch. Yeah. Unlearn, relearn. Now, if you unlearn something, but you don't replace it with a relearn, you're going to be in a deficit still. No, that's right. <laughs> what is it? The, the hippocampus won't grow. <laughs> and we be, need that. There's a such thing as hell, and you don't have to die to actually experience it. And a lot of times, that's where that is. You know, we adopt the things that we feel like is going to be great for us. And we we fill in the pleasure parts of our brain for gratification. But a lot of times we overdo it or we underdo it. Mm. And the and the unlearning and relearning helps to bring us to center. Yeah, but that can take a, a bit for for some individuals, right? For I some, mean there, there is learn, a- others. I used I always use the example, we're all children in school. We're in the school of life, obviously it is. And in, in classrooms, what is there? It's children that sit in the back. It's cho- children that sit in the front. And it's children, and they run in. They run in, and they go too. And mm-hmm. some are in the middle because they got neither to the front nor the back. And in learning, we get caught in that side of it because the ones who ran to the front are more intentional than the ones who decide they're going to sit in the back. The mm-hmm. ones in the back are more intentional about their role in the back, and it leaves all the people in the middle, which makes up a majority, the, that middle way, they look, feel powerless. They'll feel limited yeah, because they, did, they didn't make the choice fast enough and life decided for them. Yeah. It's, it's like... In, in life, sitting on the fence, right, and staying there for way too long. Mm. You also have a deep love of altruism, right? One, I think the other reason why you started the Agape Room was to, you know, to bring that sense of trueness, right, that 
that sense of being as authentic as as you possibly can. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people that have never heard of Clubhouse, right? But if you want to do a bit of a spiel for the Agape Room on Clubhouse, introduce the people that have never heard of Clubhouse ever. So then we can, you know, at least try and and get, um, you know, the conversations going around these core areas Hmm. of what we call life, right? (laughs) 100%. Yeah. Well, first of all, agape, I really felt in a place of peace mm. when I came up with the word. Uh, okay. Clubhouse is just great medium for people to come and listen in, kind of like podcasts, but you get to in, get it, step into uh, what that looks like in your life. You also you get to be involved with a like-minded culture. Only if you look for that, if you've been seeking that, yeah it, 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 what that looks like so that's what clubhouse is and it's international and now everybody can get on at the beginning it was you have to get be invited and now uh you can get on whether you have android whether you have apple and mm-hmm. when i started this club agape i was in a place of i want all the qualities of things that i stepped into during this time in my life yeah and also help to maybe coach around that, but also to give where my strengths were. And that my strengths and, and what I studied in is mindset coaching yeah. and leadership coaching. And you need one really to step into the other. And the other one, the leadership side of it alone is just not enough. So you have to have a mindset, the right mindset to be a good leader. But the but the leadership, a lot of times, people don't think they need to be in a mindset to be able to lead because they're stuck in a idea of a position. Yeah, uh, of the name or the title, right? Right. Uh, so we're, we're a society, the world is a society of titles. We come up to somebody and the first thing a lot of times we ask is, what do you do? You know, <laughs> what do you do? Yeah. And that's how we, in our heads we listen to it and we say we identify that with who am I? yeah mm. now if you come up to somebody and say who are you you yeah, know a whole you might, different a, yeah. <laughs> well you have a whole different ball game and you might not even get an answer you might get a a shrug or you know who are you yeah. you know because we're so used to the identification of what you yeah, do what you do versus living who are you genuinely who are you it, it, and so we identify that with well, a lot of times we don't, but we can with what we're passionate about. Mm-hmm. So with my peace and with my passion led me to agape, the Greek again for God's ultimate love. Yeah. And I made that, I said, I'm going to make this an acronym. Yeah. And I said, these are the pillars of what I think generally can start us in the right direction. Mm-hmm. And the first of that is awareness. Excellent. Yeah. The, the second one in agape, the G, is for growth. So mm-hmm. awareness, growth. Next A is for altruism. Yes, yes. Support, the lending of myself after I get that awareness and that growth. Mm. Because I have to have that as a habit. Mm-hmm. If I'm going to be growing in myself, then I get to help grow into others. And then the next one after the, you know, altruism is purpose. Yeah. And the purpose is always there. It's, it's always growing. And then the E is enthusiasm. The Indeed. I had the yeah. yeah, yeah. Because yeah. out of the ones that I said, none of them were adjective. Yes. None of them really instated the action or putting into the price. So I had to put something there. And enthusiasm is optimism. Yeah. It's is is positivity. Is positivity. Mm. It's it lends itself to joy. Yeah. Enthusiasm, enthusiasm for life, how I'm going to live mm-hmm. when I discover or rediscover my power. Yeah. My being, yeah. who am I? Yeah. And start to answer that look like. And so when I've said that, I said, those are for me in, in a word, uh, you know, beautiful. Yeah. Very the much. idea so. that these are foundational, you know, pillars that you can yeah. start building your castle or your yeah. building or your apartment or your house yeah. and 
uh, build on the rock, as the good yeah, book says. Exactly. It's and a I great foundation. Book. And I love yeah, that. So um, you understand. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I love how you've, uh, you know, individualized meaning into each word, or each letter, sorry, in agape. And so um, I, was very, I was very blessed because I was in gratitude already. When I, when I started this. Yeah, you said you were at peace, right? When you found it, when, or when you decided yeah, to. I, I really, it. and I said, I want, because we were still in the houses, this was, I started this uh, in uh, December of 2020. So we're in lockdown, right? Most, most of us are in. And I said, I have all this to give now. And mm-hmm. God put uh, this type of medium in front of me. I'd already been doing IG Lives. Mm. Uh, which I'm yes, going to have you on. Um, yes, the inter inter united. Inter united. Yes, inter- I'm looking forward so to it. Inter united. So when you enter, you're already united. Yes, I love so it. As a spin love- on King Arthur, as a spin on Sir Arthur, or whatever that looked like, the knighted, because I wanted to knight people with the same thing that I was growing towards. Yep. But it takes for them to choose entering. Mm. So it kind of says, you know, you deserve it or you get to have it. It says yeah. enter you. So it doesn't bring it into a question. It brings it into what are you going to do now? Yeah. Enter. It now. is. You yeah. Enter. Yeah. Into the and being knighted and being the that that side of it that has all these great adjectives behind it, like enthusiasm, yeah. cor- uh, uh, character and and courage. Yeah, oh, that's cool. And I believe that you interviewed a girl called Tanya. She's a Filipino girl who's grown yes. up in the uh, in, in Australia. Right uh, Australia, was- actually, she's now in Melbourne, and you've connected her with me. So thank you. <laughs> I call you the connector of love. So <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah, uh, so I'm uh, so uh, grateful yeah. for that. Yeah. Hopefully, if, yeah, she's the next one. She's also there. I, I think she's in Melbourne, too, but she's also a friend of Tanya's. And me and Tanya was just in a great room yesterday that she had been hosting. And these are voices that I've had a part of cultivating Yeah. by way of agape. Yeah. From just the intention of the seed and what I what I conceive to be, uh, they've, over three seasons, so to speak, or uh, three months, you know, every, you know, three months has a different season of a yeah. year of being yeah. agape. Uh, it'll be the anniversary of agape, you know, in February. Okay. Uh, hmm. And I've now talked into and been in rooms with now almost 11,000 people. Wow. That's trickled outward and people have started their rooms because they started with me and hmm. I cultivated them and sharing their voice from my place of peace. There you go. There you go. Um, on a mission, on a lifelong mission to grow over a million leaders in my lifetime. Yeah. And so when I get to a million, I'll set it at another million. You know, mm-hmm. like it just keeps go going. Go again. Yes. <laughs> keep going. You know, destination is a myth. Yeah. If we really think about it. Exactly. I think when you get to that point, like even even with goals and ambitions, right, you get to it and then then what? Right. There's it should always be evolving all the time. In theory, we step into the thing that we think we finish it so we can put it up uh, on uh, as, a, as a trophy on a statue case. Right. We put it away if we forget about it. That's what happened to a majority of of people that's won the Nobel Peace Prize. Mm, yeah, and yeah. They put the all the of the, creativity yeah. into this thing and then nothing after. At least 90% of them never went on to do anything significant with their lives after they won. Mm. They probably had a lot more life, whether that's 10 years or whether that's 20 more years. It's always, you know, it's, it's a continuation and what that looks like if yeah. if we look at if we look at life like that if we're truly present and enjoying the journey like we should i always say the quote bring joy to your journey mm. a part of but that takes stepping into what that looks like for you and we all know like the higher vibrations are more centered after love people think love should be the highest vibration no, joy is the next one after love. And the one after that is peace. Mm, and the, but I'm pretty the sure it's the Bible it says that, that, yeah, peace and joy are in there, but the most... And enlightenment is the highest. 
Yeah, love is the the most prominent. Well, well, well so love embodies those, but you have to go past that a lot of times. So the definition I gave mm. lended from where I was at. So that's my yeah. definition of mm. what that is. Okay. But uh, but love for a lot of people, right? Some of them hate love. Said I will never love again. They think of it on so many different contexts. They're not. We made it that. Our interpretation of yeah. how we were treated and not letting go, not surrendering. Eckhart Tolle talks about in his book, uh, The Power of Now, which I've just finished reading. Amazing yeah. book. Yeah, I love you him. You know, he talks about surrender. It's not, surrender is not resignation. People sometimes think it's a weakness when you're, stepping to a, a point of sur a spiritual surrender. Yeah, like a sacrificial type thing, yeah. Right, right, yeah. So it's not, it's not resignation. It's not just throwing your hands up and saying, oh, I don't have this, and I'm not supposed to have that, and I'm just going to give up. That's, that's the attitude of what that's embraced with, and that's centered around wrong things. Mm. Surrender is a place, comes from a place of, of synchronicity, comes mm -hmm. from a place of, of some type of bliss, some type of harmony. Mm. You're reckoning that you are in action. You are fluid. You are moving. Yeah, you are in you flow. Are <laughs> yeah, and and then you know, and so the things that are not mine are not supposed to be mine. Maybe yeah. yeah, at that time, and just to let it go for that, but just keep doing you. You know, long as you're improving. Yeah, and you have some type of vision of purpose for yourself you know in a good book right it says without vision the people perish mm. so we can get lost without that because without the vision of ourselves or being in curiosity of who am i repeatedly coming back to that we can find ourselves wayward right we find ourselves chasing our tail at every turn mm. we find ourselves judging other people because yeah. we judged ourselves so harshly we're not forgiving us and we're not giving back that so so love is so encompassing that is very hard for people to simplify it but it's, it is very simple if you can mm -hmm. let the all this stuff go and it never ends arthur right it never ends and so that's when we come into joy that's when we come into the higher vibration because mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. if i love you great but that's, that might just mean I'm empathetic towards you, but that doesn't mean I'm compassionate to you. Mm. Two different words. Compassion mm. is the highest form of empathy. And then you follow by sympathy. People think, well, I'm sympathetic to somebody, but that's not exactly lifting them up. You can no. hold somebody in their own, you can help them, people be in there and, and support them in being in their own prison <laughs> mm. Mm. of themselves. Yeah, you're hundred percent right. Even if they're wrong, you're mm -hmm. like, I'm just gonna be there, support them, and I'm not gonna give them anything constructive to think on. Or yeah, help you're them not challenging them, them, right? You're just agreeing with what they say, and that's yeah. It's because you know you you fear what the other person is going to think about you, and you shouldn't you shouldn't worry about what anyone else thinks, and you should just do you. Yeah, exactly. You can't right. answer the question of who am I if you're asking a question, who I am with other people, or who am I without people, or mm. who am I because of people, mm. or who am I because of my friends, or who I am because of, if you're answering the question and you're putting yourself in somebody else's shoes, then you're not thinking from an awakened, awoken part of your brain. You're coming from a place of what Eckhart Tolle talks about as the sleeper. Is a stagnant, yeah, where you're going nowhere. Yeah, with a walking dead. Uh, I think it's him that actually mentions that. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you talked about that before too. You, you understood what that looks like. The walking dead is it's, it's the state of being where it's always going to feel, even if you feel like you have everything that you've gotten, but if you're always feeling this, this it's hole. Like there's something more, yeah. Yeah, if you're feeling like uh, you're feeling like something is just not there, if you're feeling like this disparity, mm. or this, I don't know what the the bigger word of it would be. Mm. Uh, but 
it's it's something that's a practice that needs to be in place that we get to embrace on uh, every day level. What is the best for me when I'm with that person is not the biggest question. The thing is first, let me do the best for me. And we hear this uh, analogy a lot of times when you're on a plane, you know, it's the, the stewardess is right. The stewardess and the people yep. giving direct. Yeah. If you, in, in case of emergency, when this air mask dropped down, put yours on first, mm. then put on the person next to you, even if it's a little child. Why? Because you have to be rational for that person that's next to you. If you're going crazy and you you're out of them, you can't. You're not going to help soothe. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to help soothe the person that's next to you by any ways necessary. So you know, it's, it's said, as a physician would say, "Heal thyself." I forget what poet puts that into place, but you know, if it says, "Heal thyself first, you know, that step away from despair. Mm. You know, step away from things of frustration mm. or projecting in the wrong way, right? Yeah. Or, su- or suppressing, yes. which we do more than projecting. We the suppression comes first a lot of times before we project what that looks like mm. in, in mm. these places. But it does come down to enlightenment because at the end of the day, the highest, if that's the highest, and that's what we set that for, you're gonna have love for not just the people who are doing things for you. We talked about it, right? We talked about Mm -hmm. the animals. We talked about the trees. Yeah. Enlightenment knows that we understand that even if I'm a thinker or I'm thinking, therefore I am, we say think, therefore I am. A lot of times our unconscious is not the thinker, it's the doer. Mm -hmm. And it it already embraces, I am already in being with myself. Yeah, right at this moment. I understand that with the tree. It's swaying in the wind. It's, it's you know, uh, I think it's Rumi uh, that had that great quote, when the wind blows, the tree bends. Mm. Understanding that it's a fluidness that comes into play when we're actually about the being. Yeah. And that takes us being, and being means now. Mm. You know, it's present future, right? Yeah. It's like in the present. Being yeah. present right now, being in the moments of when we feel in this. Yeah. And being in, you know that. On yeah. The side and there is a too. saying too in the Bible the most important person is the one in front of you at this time. And mm-hmm. that's something to that get into your true. head. Yeah. That's something to get into your head if you tend to get distracted. And you've seen it, right? If you watch, which I tend to do, I watch couples or I watch people in a crowd and how they're mingling with each other and it is so hard it's actually really hard Arthur to stay focused on that person right it's it really is more difficult to do that than it is to have your mind sort of oh what's what are they talking about oh what are they talking about sort of thing so and get to understand if, 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 if I'm in a place of distress and I want to get out of that what do we do? We, 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 we put things in front of us that distract us. Yeah. A lot of times we don't put the right things in front of us. If I decide, okay, right now, even in the state of where I'm at, I know where to go if I want peace. Even if I can't get it on my head, I could just go watch nature. I could see the birds flying, see how they communicate with each other and chirping. You know, if you don't like birds, you know, you can see the trees. If you don't like trees, you see the grass. If you mm-hmm. don't like the grass, you can see the water. If you don't see, you know, look at the water, you can go put your feet in the sand. Mm. If you don't like your feet in the sand, you can go and watch children frolicking around and, and playing to their heart's content. Yeah. You know, it's all these peaceful ways for us to, in a healthy way, to come back to ourselves. Yeah. A lot more times we take on the corrosive things, picking up a bottle, you know, narcotics. Hmm. You know, yeah, it's almost you like you're ambushing yourself, aren't you? <laughs> Listen to toxic people that feed into your negativity. Mm. You know, a lot more times than not. Mm. Being at one with yourself in peace is very hard to do, especially at the very beginning. Yeah. And it takes practice to come to center. So, so people think meditation, yoga. Well, that doesn't happen overnight. You start off with 
two minutes, you do what you can can while your attention span is right there. You slowly build your attention span out as you go through it. Funny enough, the more we can work on that side of it, the more we can expand our consciousness and be more in the present. Mm. But it takes practice. And like we talked about before, same thing is educating ourselves or yeah. new information. It takes us to unlearn the things that don't serve us and being realistic with those as well to come to a place where we can find harmony with the actions that we're doing for ourselves. Yeah, definitely. Now you've been trained by... John C. Maxwell. Yep, John Maxwell. On a level. And Mm -hmm. also a number, a slew of others, uh, the All True Center, Mm -hmm. uh, which is a dot org, uh, non-for-profit that helps with transformative growth and transformative Mm -hmm. awareness on multiple levels uh, to to a place from blame and doubt to forgiveness and gratitude. Mm. Several courses that really helps a person unfold. And it's not just that, it's the practice of it, it's the action all the time of doing that. So I'm the person right now that's in front of you and embracing everything that you're about because not because I wasn't a good person or, you know, conscientious before all these things, but it helped me step into the awareness of who I am. Yeah. And, and that's, and that's even more profound. That was before I stepped into these mentorships and then the unseen mentors, the over uh, almost 200 books that I've got a chance to read over the last three years that I've repeated on and Repetition, mm, mother and learning, learned, to talk about yeah. it and that mm. making sure that in my critical thinking, or at least thinking for myself to simplify, yeah. it, I'm able to really step into what's the story I'm telling myself. Is that the fact? Am I mixing fiction? Mm-hmm. And where am I coming to from that discovery? Mm. And so that's yeah, what... It's an amazing topic, isn't it? But it's also <laughs> an amazing space to be in because I feel that I'm at that space where nothing can take me out of focus, right? So if there was like some crashing going on in the back, it didn't matter, Arthur, because I'd still be concentrating on you you're, because you're the one that's in front of me at this time. But it, it, it takes practice to get into that level of aware, you know, that whole awareness thing and yeah, really tapping into that. Yeah. Because we, again, it's just because we don't have enough information to be able to pose that to ourselves. We get in this rut, this perpetual rut. Mm. that makes up these things, this disdain or this uh, distraction that constantly comes in there. And it's not, it's not our situations, it's not our circumstances. It's really the calming of ourselves and being able to be in harmony with what that looks like. Mm. Uh, we have two brains. We have even, you know, the hemisphere, you have two brains physically, but also uh, on the metaphysical plane of things we have, you know, the conscious brain, we have the unconscious brain. Yes. Yeah. And, and, a, and a, a lot more times, uh, I was just on a conversation with a guru, a life coach who's do, working with celebrities and all this type of thing. And, uh, you know, he has NLP background, mm. neuro yeah. linguistic yeah. programming for those who don't uh, know. And uh, he, you know, he put it into our space that if more people, at a younger age, were schooled on why this is the way it is. Now, whether they believe it or not, at least maybe later on in life, it might come back to them and says, yeah, now that makes sense. It might turn into a a, a epiphany Hmm. later on in life if you give the information. Why? Because our subconscious mind takes it in it remembers it even if our cognitive our frontal brain does and that's the power of it so the closer we come back we we look at the external thing and we're running towards that but when we actually make bring our intentionality to coming back into ourselves we find the fluidity of our conscious starting to melt, you know, congealed into this beautiful person that's always been there. That's yeah. why we always yeah that's, That's you, why we always say you're yeah. complete as you are. Yeah. That's what we mean. 
where you're at, that's your process. Yeah. Trees have process. They keep growing as long as they do. You know, animals have process. We always use the metaphor from the butterfly. It has a process. It, even when it's a caterpillar, it's always been the butterfly. Mm. Logistics lets us give different words for, you know, babies and adults and children and, you know, parents and, you know, all these types of separations. But it's best not to get caught up in all the separations because that's just logistics. Yeah, exactly. Good it's way only to put it. Yeah, I know that you've found that of really good value. And I know that you're going to find part two of that, which is episode 11, even more so. So I look forward to seeing you along with Arthur Rutledge as we continue speaking about the core principles of harmony and connectivity. See you there.